This is the second in a series of videos on eclipses. It will focus on an understanding of how often eclipses occur, motivating a discussion of syzygy and eclipse seasons. Both solar and lunar eclipses occur when Earth, Moon, and Sun are aligned in a straight line configuration, what astronomers refer to as syzygy. In the case of a lunar eclipse, Earth, Sun, and Moon line up perfectly with Earth in between the Sun and the Moon. This can only happen during a full moon. Solar eclipses occur when the three objects are aligned with the moon in between Earth and the Sun. This can only occur during a new moon. Let's motivate the study of eclipses using a peer instruction question. How often, typically, does a lunar eclipse occur? Classroom students should follow normal procedures or instructor guidelines. Viewers not in a classroom should record your vote and explain your reasoning on a piece of paper. Please pause this video and answer the question. The frequency of eclipses is illustrated using a diagram with time on both axes. Here, solar eclipses are indicated by sun icons and lunar eclipses by moon icons. This column represents 2015. Note that in March, a solar eclipse occurred, and two weeks later, a lunar eclipse occurred, the time between new and full moon. We get another pair of eclipses in September. We can then add additional columns for other years. This diagram shows eclipses over a 25-year period. It turns out there are two times of year when eclipses can occur, known as eclipse seasons. Eclipse seasons last for about 33 days, and they reoccur roughly every five and a half months. There will be one lunar eclipse each eclipse season, very rarely two. So the best answer is that lunar eclipses occur typically twice a year. The apparatus shown is useful for visualizing eclipse seasons. It is based on the article, A Demonstration of Eclipse Seasons by Charles Eckroth, published in The Physics Teacher in 1996. One should keep in mind that nothing is close to the proper scale in this model. It consists of two hula hoops connected by a threaded rod. Earth is at the center, the moon is the white styrofoam ball on the inner circle, and the sun is the yellow ball on the outer circle. Twelve pieces of black tape mark the sun's monthly apparent motion. Both the sun and moon can be moved on their orbits. We begin with the sun, moon, and earth aligned in the same plane around the time of full moon. Note that if the three orbits were coplanar, there would be a lunar and solar eclipse every month. However, the true lunar orbit is inclined to the plane of the ecliptic, the plane of Earth's orbit, by about 5 degrees. I will exaggerate the 5 degree tilt to clearly demonstrate the relationship. Thus, typically, at full moon, the moon is too far above or below the plane of the ecliptic to pass through Earth's shadow and result in a lunar eclipse. Similarly, at new moon, the moon is typically too far above or below the ecliptic for its shadow to hit Earth and result in a solar eclipse. The threaded rod represents the line of nodes, the intersection of the plane of Earth's orbit around the sun and the plane of the moon's orbit around Earth. Eclipses can only occur when both the sun and the moon are very near the line of nodes. Because of the half degree angular sizes of the sun and moon and the small tilt of five degrees, Eclipses can occur within several days of syzygy, so it is possible to have two lunar eclipses in a given eclipse season, as shown in the bracketed region. Note that the line of nodes processes westward about 19 degrees per year or two-thirds of a black tape marking. Thus the apparently eastward-moving sun passes through the westward-moving line of nodes sooner than the previous year. So eclipse seasons are closer to five and a half months apart than six months apart. This computer simulation shows a correctly scaled Earth-Moon system as seen from the Sun. Note that the Moon is typically too far above the plane of the ecliptic to pass through the shadow of Earth, or too far below the plane of the ecliptic for the Moon's shadow to hit Earth. We are now in between eclipse seasons. However, as we enter an eclipse season, that will no longer be true. Let me exaggerate the size of the Moon and Earth and slow the animation rate. I have stopped the simulation as a solar eclipse occurs. Our perspective is looking from the sun right along the line of nodes. This is the middle of an eclipse season. 
More teaching materials can be found on the web at astro.unl.edu.